exponents, the square root, we got binomial in the top and in the bottom, okay? Um, there is something called logarithmic differentiation that may make our life a little bit easier, okay? So, what we are going to do, remember in the rules of mathematics, it says if you do something to one side of the equation, as long as you do it to the other side of the equation, you're okay, you're still balanced, okay? So, we are going to take the natural log of both sides of this equation. And so the only thing I did was I applied the natural log to both sides and I went ahead and wrote the square root as the one half power. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to log. Okay. Now, I'm going to use my properties of logarithms to split up that quotient right there. You can change a quotient to the difference of logs. So that's nice, no more quotient rule, right? Yeah. I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to use the property that says move the exponent to a coefficient. So all I've done is I've used properties of logarithms so far. Yep. Okay. Now we still have none of your calculus. That, that's all pretty good. Okay. Okay. Now. We've done the logarithmic part, now the differentiation comes into play. Now we're going to take the derivative of both sides. Alright, so what is the derivative of the natural log of y? 1 over y, thank you, times y prime or dy over dx, whichever one you want to use. Alright, let's take the derivative of 2 natural log of x minus 2. Well, the 2 is a scalar multiple. Derivative of the natural log yes, is 1 over x minus 2. Is 2 a variable? No, so no, it is not a product rule. 1 over x minus 2, the derivative of x minus 2 is 1, so we're done with that piece. Minus 1 half. Derivative of the natural log of x squared plus 1 is 1 over x squared plus 1 times 2x. All right, so what can we simplify? We can simplify the 2 times the 1 half. All right. So I'm going to, let's just rewrite things a little bit here. Two over x minus two minus x over x squared plus one. Yes, but I'm not doing it because we're solving, we're trying to take the derivative. We want y prime by itself. So how do we get y prime by itself? <laughs> Multiply by y. Now, I don't want y on the other side. I want this all in terms of x. So, I'm going to go back to my original. I'm going to pull my y back down. What? I'm gonna put my y in there. You're looking wow. That's cute. I'm coming back. We don't want, and we can't have x's and y's on the same side. You're right. I should have moved. 
Anytime you're trying to add two fractions, they have to have the same denominator. So, we need to multiply the first one by x squared plus 1, because that's what it doesn't have. We need to multiply the second one by x minus 2, because that's what it doesn't have. And then I went ahead and just put them in a single numerator over the common denominator. I hope you're okay with that. Mm, kind of not really. Okay, so we can do a little simplifying here. Check out what we've got. We've got x minus 2 in the denominator, and we have two of them over here, right? We're multiplying, so we can look at that, okay? So we can cancel the one in the bottom with one of them in the top. Well, when you looked at the answer choices, you would have realized. So we've got one x minus 2 left in the top, and I'm going to simplify that stuff that was in the first numerator. 2x squared plus 2 minus it. I'm going to simplify what was in the first numerator. Square plus one to the three halves. Add your exponents. Okay, so then what's in our parentheses there simplifies to x squared plus two x plus two. Okay, so I fully realized that that was a lengthy process. Okay. But do you all remember how difficult it was to get to this point when we did the quotient rule with that? Remember we had to factor out the negative exponents and then we had to distribute, combine like terms, and then cancel. I mean, arguably they're, they're kind of equally difficult. Um, but this makes the differentiation part easier. It's easier to take the derivative. Um, the simplifying of this may be a little bit more complicated. Um, the other way, I think the taking the derivative was more complicated. Okay. <coughs> All right. Let's find this derivative using logarithmic differentiation. Now, check out what's going on with this one. We have the square root of three binomials multiplied by each other. Hmm. We have the square root of three binomials multiplied by each other. So if we were to do this without logarithmic differentiation, we're looking at the chain rule with the square root, and then we're looking at the product rule with three terms. Uh, you want to talk about a nightmare, okay? Not fun. But with logarithmic differentiation, we can split this up, and it's going to make life a lot easier. Okay. Yes. If you really, really, really wanted to, but then you're still going to have to deal with the chain rule with a 
how inside of it and your answer may not be in the form that the answer choices are in. Okay, so let's try this using logarithmic differentiation. Take the natural log of both sides. On the review? I don't think I put one like this on the review. Okay, so I took the natural log of both sides and went ahead and made the square root the one half power. All right, so let's use our properties of logarithms. Bring down that power first. What can we do with the product? It turns into a sum. Okay, yes, that just made my problem a little bit longer. However, taking the derivative is a lot more simple because now there's no more product rule. Okay, there's no more product rule. So let's take the derivative of both sides. The derivative of the natural log of y is 1 over y times y prime. The derivative of the right side, just keep the 1 half in front, okay? 1 over x minus 1 plus 1 over x minus 2 plus 1 over x minus 3. Okay, so y prime is equal to 1 half times, let's see here, <clears throat> let's write that as x minus 1 times x minus 2 times x minus 3 to the 1 half. Okay, I just plugged it I moved my y to the other side and plugged it in. Because y was the square root. So the first one is missing the x minus 2 times the x minus 3. The second one is missing the x minus 1 times the x minus 3. The third one is missing the x minus 1 times x minus 2. The bottom is the common denominator x minus 1, x minus 2, x minus 3. So, we've got two steps left, okay? First of all, we've got this to the one-half in the numerator, and then we've got it in the denominator to the first. So what does that leave us with? Okay. Yeah. Uh, that would be the numerator and the denominator. Negative sure. one-half or one-half in the, in the denominator, okay? So... Denominator, we've got two, that one half, that two goes in the denominator. And then we've got the square root of x minus one, x minus two, x minus three. And the numerator, we need to multiply all those things out. So the first one would be x squared minus five x plus six. The second one would be x squared minus four x plus three. And the last one would be x squared minus 3x plus 2. So final answer, 3x squared minus 12x 